Hey YouTube, Adam here. Uh, I want to do an update. I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant to do this just because I'm uh, not a very good solderer. Uh, I don't have a ton of experience, but I wanted to just show that, um, first of all, what the problem is with this, and that you can do this sort of repair with very basic tools. I don't do this often enough that I've purchased an expensive soldering iron. This is like one of those $10 crappy horrible ones. Uh, just some uh, solder wire, desoldering wire. This is like a solder wick material and some basic solder and a few capacitors. What's happening is I have a couple of these uh, Linksys uh, workgroup switches. They work well. They're gigabit switches, uh, but this one has started to have a problem where under any amount of load it just starts dropping ports. Uh, it will appear to be working correctly but certain ports, and it changes which ports, it just it doesn't seem to matter, uh, it just drops ports at random and if we uh, open it up here it's pretty obvious why. I went ahead and already removed, there's four screws under these little feet on the bottom, but uh, this was made back in the, the good old days of the 2000s, in the mid 2000s I believe, maybe 2008 at latest, where uh, we were in the middle of the horrors of capacitor gate. And if you look at these capacitors, you'll see that all four of these ones are uh, domed. They're no good. These two seem okay so I'm not even bothering replacing them. These are 470 microfarad, 25 volt, 105 degree capacitor, so I have four replacements that I uh, ordered for this. I could just replace this with a newer unit, but honestly, this has performed perfectly well. I'm looking here to see if I can find a date code on here. And... I don't see one. There is like E07, but that could just be... Um, a tester number? I don't know. Oh, start 2006. So, yeah, these were made in the height of capacitor gate. And fortunately, these are all just normal capacitors that are probably posing the problem here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just desolder these. It looks like there's really no other contacts around any of these points. So, this is going to be really easy to do. I'm not going to have as neat of a nice little. Uh, solder job done I'm sure by the time I'm, I'm done removing these but that's fine. One important thing to note is that capacitors do have a polarity to them um, so it's important to to try to figure out which side is the uh, positive and the negative. Usually the uh, I think the longer lead is the negative side but all I'm gonna do is copy the, uh, the striped color part because that most of the time, although I have seen them that are reversed, uh, should just match up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, it's important when you're doing this to take the time to actually make sure that you're desoldering the right component, of course. I haven't used this particular solder wick before. Uh, this is really thin, so hopefully it will actually work. But the key is to just kind of get that good and hot and hopefully absorb most of the solder from the component here. Looks like we got quite a bit off. Alright, so the new caps are mounted. I'm not really going to show the solder because it's ugly and people will give me a hard time about it. Uh, this cap is... it exploded in the most like that's that's pretty bad. I'm surprised I didn't I didn't hear a pop when that one went off. It left electrolyte all over the board. I kind of cleaned that up. So I'm gonna plug this thing in now and see if it even still turns on. I'm just gonna put it on top of this plastic thingy to make sure it doesn't touch any of the little wire bits that are lying around down here. All right, so it looks like it's gonna work. So I'm gonna put it sort of back in its case and go plug it into some Ethernet stuff and. Uh, See if she wants to run. All right, sorry for the uh, sorry for the handheld camera here, but I don't really have room to 
hook anything up in my little server area, so, uh, tripod wise. So, I'm gonna go ahead and just swap this stuff over that was plugged into the uh, temporary. Alright, that's already looking better than it was. It is not crashing and resetting. Do we have two lights? We have two lights. Do we have port three? I only have four things, or three things to plug, well, yeah, I have four things to plug in. It looks like we're going to be good to go here. And I don't know if that port, I don't think that one's hooked up to anything, actually. This one is the link, so I'll just plug that in. Alright, so everything looks like it's working here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, check out the computer to see if we're actually getting throughput through this. Alright, so this file is a, uh, a file that's on my NAS. It's a uh, Windows ISO, so let's go ahead and just see if we can get file transfer going. And as you can see there, maxing out the gigabit so everything is working perfectly so uh, I didn't really go into a lot of the detail on how to do the the soldering because I am no solder expert the main point of this was just to demonstrate if you have a problem with a similar switch that that's probably what's wrong and also that it can be fixed with inexpensive and commonly available tools you don't have to spend a hundred or two hundred dollars on a soldering station or anything just basic stuff will do it so uh, anyway I want to thank you for watching this video and I will be back later.